Thank you. I, I just want to start to say how excited that uh, my family and I are to uh, be here, be a part of this uh, athletic department. Uh, quite honored, in fact, to uh, have been hired here. Uh, there's a great pool of coaches out there, and I'm sure many of them had uh, interest in this position. And to have been hired here at, at uh, Youngstown State was just quite an honor for me. And, and I look forward to uh, you know, getting started. Uh, been extremely impressed with the, the staff here, uh, you know, Ron Stroh's uh, uh, administrative staff and, and support staff have just been fantastic as far as helping me hit the ground running and, and getting me where I need to be and showing me uh, the, the ins and outs of how things will go within our department. And, um, you know, I just want to thank all of them uh, again uh, for, for, for what they've provided for me in the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks. It, it's been kind of a whirlwind uh, kind of uh, period for the interview and the hire and trying to get up here and get things started but it's uh, so far been a great experience I've enjoyed every minute minute of it and I look forward to uh, getting family up here and being up here permanently so questions maybe I mean just start what did you see about this job because on the on the surface there's some tough things about it you know just in terms of being in the Midwest and, and also being a Struggle, yeah, well, I think I think uh, you know you, you look past some of the the recent history, uh, and maybe you, you have to look a little bit deeper. And, and one of the things when we went to Jacksonville State as a staff, we tried to look back into the tradition of the program. Uh, you can look back, you know, not too many years before you find a conference championship and an appearance in the NCAA regionals. And uh, you know, that being said, that's a great place to start. You know, obviously, the the tradition of the athletic department at Youngstown State, is, it, you know, speaks for itself. Uh, and getting up here and having the opportunity to see the facilities um, and, and the resources that, that, are, that are available uh, within the program, that to me was, was very exciting and, and I think it's a, a, a great vehicle for, for moving towards uh, Horizon League championships and, and competing on, on kind of a regional and national level to an extent uh, that we hope to do. Coach, how do you turn the program around? 11 44 this past season, follow up to Joe. I mean, program that, that has struggled. So, what's your message to fans to turn it around? Well, I think if you look at, again, the comparisons with Jacksonville State and with Youngstown State, um, the year before we got to Jacksonville State, 11 and 39 year, three wins in the conference, only six Division I wins, um, team batting average of 219, and a team GPA lower than that. So it, it's, uh, you, when you look at the comparisons of those two programs, I think Youngstown State uh, far uh, exceeds uh, you know, where the, the, the current level and condition of the program far exceeds what was at Jacksonville State. So it's a good starting point. I think initially it comes down to players, uh, you know, getting, getting talent level that, that uh, uh, can be uh, you know, acceptable uh, towards the top of the Horizon League, and then you, you just try to grow from there and, and move from there. I think... Uh, Player development is, is huge as far as getting uh, our younger guys to reach their potential at, at an early period in their playing career. Uh, that hopefully you can have you know some, some freshmen turn into sophomores pretty quickly, and some of the sophomores become juniors pretty quickly, and then and I think the talent level uh, will improve. I think uh, another thing that we are going to stress is the competitiveness. Uh, we'll compete in uh, the fall in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, academically, strength training, conditioning, baseball type, all, all those types of things will compete uh, among ourselves to try to, you know, make sure that we're uh, approaching that in the right direction so that, that when we get to the spring, you know, the, the atmosphere uh, that, that we'll face won't be new to us. In reading your, your biography, and John mentioned that you're a good recruiter, what makes a good recruiter and how do you recruit? good players to this program? Well, I think really it, it, it's not hard to pick out the, the top level talent. Um, you know, it's, it's fairly easy to, to see uh, a radar gun show 93 or 94, you know, that, that's easy to do. Um, those type of kids usually are the, the, the upper echelon, you know, ESPN type schools, you know, the, the big name schools get recruited very heavily by those. I think the, the Challenge comes to uh, being able to project kids. They may not quite uh, be that now, but could be that uh, down the road. That's one of the things that I've had some success in doing is projecting kids and, and using the programs that we have to develop their talent. 
uh, obviously that that's a start. You have to you have to see some sort of talent and and, and move from there. And secondly, it comes down to relationships. Uh, we feel very strongly that that you have to recruit the the family and and build that relationship to where uh, trust is never an issue between the coaching staff and the player. Do you have to take it to another level because Kent State's 45 minutes up the road and we know what they did this year? So I mean, you're going against not only you know the Pitts and and some Max, right. but especially Kent. Well, I th I, th I think. Uh, Basically, the college baseball in general is very competitive as far as recruiting, especially now that uh, there's scholarship limitations and there's roster limitations on what you can do. Uh, it's, you know, maybe you know, providing a little more parity in the in the uh, college baseball landscape. But uh, we're going to go after kids that are that are you know that type of talent or project to be that type of talent, and you know, we're not going to back away from any kids just because uh, Kent might be on them or because. Um, you know, Ohio State or Pitt or somebody else might be on them. We, we want to go after the best kids and show them that Youngstown State is, is a quality uh, institution. It's a great place to get an education. It'd be a great place to have uh, an experience in college baseball and play a career. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that we um, you would like recruit, you know, recruit to our league. That's not, a, that's not a goal, is just recruit to our league because the talent level is this versus the Big Ten being that. Uh, we're going to go after the best kids that, that we can possibly get and then try to coach them up from there. Uh, I, I think a lot of winning and a lot of success comes from how you play the game. Uh, you know, I, I think if you talk to Coach Strickland at Kent State uh, you know, you compare the talent pools between Kent and the University of Oregon in the Super Regional, uh, you could probably look out and see uh, a lot of skill on Oregon's team. Uh, but Kent won that series in the Super Regional because of how they played and how they went about it and how they competed and how they took care of it, uh, situations that presented themselves to them in those three games that they played. This is a big change for you and your family. You're an Alabama guy and your wife's from Alabama. Why, why go for a head coaching position now and why in Ohio? Well, I think at some point, uh, if, if you're going to be a head coach, if you have desire to be a head, co head coach, you want to go ahead and make that move. Um, it would have been a, a you know very comfortable and easy thing to stay in Alabama. It's was, it was kind of a win-win situation uh, in this in the uh, spot I had at Jacksonville State. But um, you know it, it, you always want to kind of challenge yourself, and, and just the fact uh, uh, that it's up north really wasn't that big of a factor for us as we were looking at, at a new uh, place to be. It was uh, not too different from. Uh, Nebraska growing up for me when you start looking at, at weather and and culture and things like that and uh, you know one thing that that uh, you know just sealed it for me was when my when my wife became very excited about the opportunity of seeing something new and experience something new and being in a new place. See, does that change your philosophy? I mean, did you guys were you guys able to? Have, I mean, was there snow down in Alabama? I mean, because obviously up here there's years where the practice is indoors. Until the first game, right. so does that change? You know your your philosophy at all? No, we we had we had snow in Alabama twice, I think. Um, so it, it was uh, that will be nothing new. Um, <laughs> Did it postpone games or anything? No, it, it was actually believe it or not, we had one we had one snow that was about uh, I, I don't know, it was maybe 10, 10 foot or something, and and uh, I I had gone out to Birmingham for an appointment, and uh, Coach Case not knowing how to deal with snow. He thought, well, we'll just roll it up off the outfield, and uh, so he called the team together, and they had—I mean—they had rolls about—I don't know—they had to be about four foot high, and of course, they lasted two weeks longer than if we'd have just waited and, and let it melt off. So it's—it's it's not something that that concerns me a lot. I mean, it—it it, um, Jacksonville State was a place where, and it may have been just because I was getting older. Um, I was as cold as I've ever been in my life several days in the dugout in Jacksonville State because we sat up in the hills a little bit and, the, and you know, the humidity and the, when the sun would go down, it'd be quite cold. So, uh, you know, we never had to postpone games or those kind of things. It's the snow might, you know, force us to do here, but, you know, we, we, we'll be able to deal with that. And, uh, of course, the facilities provide great opportunity to go ahead and move forward. Which is which is an advantage that Youngstown would have that Jacksonville State did not. Do you know much about the Horizon League? A little bit. When I was at UAB, we played Valparaiso. Uh, one of my roommates from college was the pitching coach at uh, Milwaukee for several years. 
Uh, so I do have some familiarity within the league. Um, we haven't played a Horizon team in, well, I guess it would have been about 96 or 97, but been able to follow the league and kind of see who's doing what and, uh, you know, familiar with Coach Cooper at uh, Wright State. Uh, for, you know, he, was a, he was a West Coast guy out when I was coaching in California. So that you get to kind of know a few of the, uh, the, uh, the names and, and faces from the websites, and so you follow a little bit. And, of course, you know, I, think, I don't think there's a college coach alive that's not some sort of baseball junkie checking websites and stats and league standings and those kind of things. So there is some familiarity there.